Hi, I'm Stacey Zimmels. I'm a feeding and swallowing specialist speech therapist and I'm Doddle's expert partner. Here are my top three tips for encouraging independent eating, but whilst keeping mess minimum. So tip number one is accept the inevitable. Mess is going to happen, especially with younger babies. And think about what you what things you might be able to buy or have at home that's going to keep that as minimal as possible. For bibs, my suggestion is a high-necked, long-sleeve bib that also covers the knees, in which case your baby's completely covered and at the end of the meal they leave the table as shiny and clean as they came. The second tip is for those babies who are weaning or starting solids, having bibs which can in some way attach to the tray, which means that the gap that often food falls down onto their lap or onto the floor through is covered with the bib. And at the end of the day, they can scoop up the bib, um, take it off them and leave them clean without mess on the floor. And the final tip is for the floor is to get a, um, a square, wipeable mat that can be easily cleaned particularly if you've got um, meal times in rooms with carpeted floors can be really helpful looking at my second tip i want to suggest that we all look at the cutlery that we're using for our little ones because um it's where a lot of the mess can happen especially because they're learning a new skill and if the cutlery isn't really fit for the purpose that it's required for then lots of it's going to fall off or fall away from the plate or onto the floor so i recommend the doddle toddler cutlery for learning to um, eat particularly like it because they're made from metal which means the edge of the spoon and also the tines of the fork are really effective in scooping food on or stabbing food. The other thing about the cutlery you should be looking out for are short handles, which means that when your baby or child is taking food to their mouth, the movement of the hand and wrist is very, very minimal. And it's when they have to do larger movements that the food's going to be more prone to falling off. My final tip might be a little bit unexpected, and that is to think about the plate that you're using, and I'll tell you why. So you're gonna look for a plate that is static and maintains stability on the table. So either a stick down plate or a plate that has some sort of rim that stops it moving on the underside. And this is because our little ones use quite big, gross movements at the beginning of learning to scoop. And they're so gross that if you've got a lightweight plate, it can often push the plate across the table and even sometimes onto the floor. My second tip for a plate is to look for a plate that's got uh, at least one side, which is curved upwards. This is because when your baby's eating, they're just using one hand to scoop and they're not using a helper to help get the food and keep it on the spoon or on the fork. And um, having the high side means that as they scoop, instead of scooping and pushing food off the plate, they're scooping up into the side of the plate, which helps them get food on and stops all that food spilling off the plate and onto your kitchen or dining room table. We really like in our family the Doddle children's plate because it serves both purposes and we still use it now even though my little one's already four years old. I hope that you found my top three tips helpful and I look forward to hearing how you get on.